from Augusta. You're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. An arrest and the murder of an Augusta hairstylist. We'll tell you about this latest development as the case moves forward. Plus, closing and consolidating Richmond County schools are preparing for the possibility of big changes. One of my, my twins said, Dad, if they're going to tear down our school, we're, we're not going to be happy about that. But first, before we get to that, we're tracking some heavy rain moving across the area. Let's send things right over to First Alert Meteorologist Emily Acton for a look at radar. Emily. Yeah, we're tracking these showers and thunderstorms as they move into and across the CSRA. Good news is these storms are weakening significantly. So uh, we're still under a severe thunderstorm warning for portions uh, north of I-20. That's including Columbia County, McCormick, even over to McDuffie County. But again, really not seeing any severe limits as of right now and not expecting any more throughout the rest of the night. I think they're just letting that warning expire, which will expire at 615. So the rest of our evening should be smooth sailing for us. Maybe a little bit windy out there. And again, we're definitely still going to see some rainfall move through probably the city of Augusta heads up maybe 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, that time window there to see those showers move through. But max wind speeds that I have seen today have been about 45 miles per hour. So that's still well below severe limits. So that's some good news. Again, as we've had a few severe thunderstorm warnings, but haven't had any damage reports or things like that, that wind advisory is going through the rest of our evening and even into the early morning hours for our Thursday. But be aware, Thursday, it's going to be a cold start to the day and we're going to be cloudy throughout the greater part of the day. I'll have a look at your full forecast, though, coming up soon. Our top story tonight, this is the moment our cameras were rolling when SWAT and North Augusta Public Safety officers arrested Caleb White. He's the Richmond County suspect wanted for questioning in connection to DeMond Parrish's murder. White's arrest came more than a month after deputies first said they were looking for him after Parrish disappeared. Parrish, a 31-year-old hairstylist, was last seen in Augusta in early January. Investigators recently found him dead in Aiken County. But how did we get here today? Nick Velan joins us live from the newsroom. The Marshal's Office, North Augusta Public Safety, SWAT, and more swarmed the Plaza Place apartments in North Augusta yesterday evening. Two hours of negotiating, ending with North Augusta saying Caleb White is a murder suspect and he's also been wanting for questioning in Richmond County with the DeMond Parish case. This case goes back to January 8th when DeMond Parish was last seen in Augusta and reported missing on the 10th. Two days later, family and friends searched Mill Street where he was last seen. Candles lighting up the sky on the 15th as community came together to pray for a safe return. January 19th, Caleb White becomes wanted for questioning regarding DeMond's disappearance. Almost a month later, on February 17th, the missing persons case turns into a death investigation when Parrish's body is found on Silver Bluff Road in Aiken County. White is still wanted for questioning in the case. On the 21st of February, his death was ruled a homicide. The Aiken County Coroner's Office says he died from a gunshot wound. The search for White continued until Tuesday night. Authorities arrested White. The U.S. Marshal's Office says they were in North Augusta for a murder warrant for Richmond County. They were looking for and found White. North Augusta says he is a murder suspect. Richmond County canceled their search for Caleb White this morning, saying he was located in South Carolina and now in custody. And Caleb White is currently still in the Aiken County Detention Center. North Augusta Public Safety says he will be extradited back to Richmond County. DeMond Parish's funeral will be this Saturday at the Truth Church of Augusta. It will begin at 11 a.m. And we're, we've reached out for more information from Richmond County and we're still waiting to hear back. Nick Veland in the newsroom. Thanks for tracking that story for us tonight. A 38-year-old man died after a shooting on Washington Road early this morning. That victim is John Loden Jr. The coroner says he was pronounced dead at the scene just after 3 a.m. Around 2.30, deputies responded to reports of shots fired and a person down near Alexander Drive and Brookman's Road. When they got there, they found Loden lying down in the eastbound right lane dead. There's no word yet on what led up to the shots fired. City Engineering working on cleaning up the 5th Street pedestrian bridge after vandals tagged the area in blue graffiti. The engineers were doing an inspection of the bridge when they noticed that damage. And just after noon today, crews were also at Broad and 5th Street fixing a water service, lo service line break. Interrupted like a fountain. You could see it just shooting up from the street there into the air. 
Parents in Richmond County, public meetings start next week on the plan to close and consolidate some schools. This will impact thousands of students in various elementary and middle schools. Sydney Hood on your side now with everything you need ahead of next week's meetings. Inside the Richmond County Board of Education, change could be flowing in. One of my, my twins said, Dad, if they're going to tear down our school, we're, we're not going to be happy. Nothing has bloomed yet, but there is a lot to consider. C.T. Walker won't be C.T. Walker um, with just removing it from its historic location. His twin daughters, Mariah and Madison, are first graders here. And our children love going to the school. This is their second year going to the school. In this 30-page plan, C.T. Walker Magnet School would move here to where the Tubman Education Center is on Walton Way. Right now, it's a nightmare where they're currently located, but I feel that moving it to the Walton Way location is going to cause more of a logistical nightmare. Traffic is not this dad's only concern. I feel that if you move the school in a different area where the crime rates are a little bit higher, I think that would make parents a little bit more uneasy, you know, taking their kids to school, wondering whether or not their kids are truly safe or not. Because after all, students are the top priority here. I am 1,000% certain that we have not just myself, but um, other parents here in the CSRA that are just as passionate or even more passionate than I am about this school and their their voices will definitely be heard. And the only way to do that is by bringing your voice to the table. In Augusta, Sydney Hood, on your side. And if you want to join in, that first public meeting is on Monday at A. Brian Mary Elementary School. The meeting impacts students at Garrett, Lake Forest Hills, A. Brian Mary, and Warren Road Elementary Schools. We have a list of all those meetings and the plan up for consideration on our website and the app at WRDW.com. The City of Augusta laying out its next slate for some of the big projects covered by SPLOS 9, the sales tax money that goes to specific things before voters get to decide, everything from infrastructure or even bigger ideas like a water park for South Augusta or funding for that new boathouse. Today was the first workshop for SPLOS 9, and the city says this next phase is estimated to collect $300 million. Our Craig Allison tells us how they're looking to spend your money. $300 million is being laid out for the future, but people here off of Milledgeville Road want to know when their time will come. Back in 2001, when Splos Phase 4 was laid out, millions of dollars were allocated to the Rocky Creek drainage system, but there's still $2.6 million that haven't been used, and residents here are feeling that pain. Laid out in 11 pages, Interim Administrator Takiya Douse highlighted money spent from SPLOS projects going all the way back to 1996. She wants to focus on city infrastructure moving forward, but people here around Rocky Creek feel forgotten. We get to clean up whatever the flood brings. <laughs> Extra work for me. Nothing still yet has been done. They'll come and clean the creek out, but then when it rains again, then the floods all over again. So uh, if they do have the fund for it, uh, I wish they would come and do something about that creek. While they maintain they still don't have enough money to do this project to completion, we found about $320 million still unused, going as far back as SPLOS 3 from 1996. Moving forward, there's lots of optimism and ideas for what the next $300 million should be used for. At uh, San Antonio, Texas and other places to have riverfronts, Augusta's missing out on that. Fire department needs money, uh, boat house, paving of streets. Expanding our offering up the river as well as our bike trail certainly benefits the people uh, of Augusta. Now the timeline has been set for commissioners to come up with a list by this fall so that residents can weigh in by January and then voting for what will be approved in that 300 million by November 2025. In Augusta, Craig Allison on your side. And yeah, people in South Augusta are going, what? There's a water park in this uh, boss plant? Right, and like all Augustans will say, we'll believe when we see it. That's true. We've, we've heard of a few water parks but, in our day. But suddenly the sales tax is not so boring after all. Right, right? exactly. It's one way to make it interesting. <laughs> All right, here's a quick look at some other priorities under SPLOS 9. A newer upgraded coroner's office, help for cemeteries, funding for detention center, jail pods, juvenile court, and much more. Some of the funding could also be sent to Blythe or Hepzibah for improvements there. Well, the two-time defending state champs, Westside Patriots, they are heading to the State Elite Eight. The game started just at the top of the hour. Our sports director, Dan Booth, joining us live with the latest when we move on to sports. I'm tracking heavy rainfall as it moves closer to the city of Augusta. And what all you can expect for the rest of your evening coming up next. Time.
taking a look out there over River Watch at I-20. You can see some dark clouds in the sky, and Emily Acton is monitoring those for us. Emily. Yeah, Laura, I've been checking some rainfall, or tracking, I should say, some rainfall that has been moving throughout the CSRA uh, this evening, and you can see the wind gusts behind me. We're not even having to look at the cloud cover or rain there, just the wind gust alone, definitely showing a, a line of showers that are moving through. You can see some rain also moving through. It's currently not sunny, but uh, we are still sitting in those 70s, so definitely an unsettling pattern for our evening. Evening. Still have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings, but thankfully uh, those storms are really starting to weaken. I'm expecting those severe thunderstorm warnings to expire in the next three minutes or so. So that's definitely some good news. And this is all due to a strong cold front that is moving through. You can see that temperature gradient here just by the color. Anywhere that we're seeing those oranges and yellows, it's definitely a lot warmer than those greens and blues there right now in Augusta. Like I said, we're sitting in those middle 70s. But again, that's going to change over the next couple of hours. We're already getting some readings over in Thompson, sitting at 66 right now. So that's a drastic difference between our 74 here in Augusta and just a small uh, physical difference there. And that's due to the places that I've seen that rainfall and that cold front has officially moved through and the counties that have not yet are still sitting in those 70s. So again, some showers, maybe a couple rumbles of thunder, but really just some heavy rainfall is what we're tracking for the rest of our evening again we still have that severe thunderstorm warning that's set to expire at 6 15. i'm expecting that uh, the national weather service to let that expire because again we haven't had any reports of that severe criteria which is wind gusts above 58 miles per hour i think the max that we've seen is right around 50 so still some strong winds out there but not severe limits so that's definitely some good news still going to be windy overnight tonight we have those wind alerts in effect overnight but that shower or those showers are going to move out of our area for the early morning hours thursday we are going to be dry but overcast and a lot cooler definitely going to need your jacket for thursday i know we really haven't needed a jacket for the past couple of days but just know thursday definitely going to be a lot cooler roughly 20 degree difference between today's high and tomorrow's high now once we get to friday going to need a rain jacket for you going to be raining off and on throughout the greater part of the day friday unfortunately going to see lots of showers there Taking a bigger look at what we're seeing again that cold front is going to move through overnight tonight we're going to be cloudy throughout our thursday and then some moisture coming into play friday going to be overcast and some heavy heavy rainfall expected throughout the greater part of the day not expecting any severe weather so that's definitely some good news once we get into saturday evening things are going to be a little bit off and on in terms of showers but rain chances do not go away for the next seven days we're definitely in this spring pattern with the roller coaster for temperatures and lots of rainfall on your sideline good evening everyone i'm reporting live from west side high school where the two-time defending state champion patriots are going head to head with model in the state elite eight the patriots we are in the first quarter and they started out on an 11 to nothing run to get this one going they're currently up 14 
action this evening. They're all playing for spots in the Final Four this Saturday. We'll have the scores and the latest on all of these games tonight at 11. Now, before the season started, I spoke with head coach Jerry Hunter about just how difficult it can be to try to win three consecutive state championships between the players leaving that were graduating last year and the list goes on of all the obstacles in their way. When you think about what they're doing, he told me that this team has to create their own winning legacy and forget and not worry about what happened in the past. They have to live in the moment and get the job done tonight. And if they win this game, moving on to the state final four could be a great way to get them on that path to doing that and creating their own legacy. Pretty good at that. Yeah, West Side getting it done so far. Dan Booth, thanks so much for the live update there. If you're looking for a way to help our local veterans, we've got an idea for you. Get ready to jump behind the wheel. Next on News 12, we explain how you can lend a helping hand. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. Let's go! <laughs> The USA area is home to more than 66,000 veterans. For some, making it to doctor's appointments can be a challenge. And now some volunteers are stepping up. As Taylor Martin explains, their program is so popular, they need more help to continue. Rick Morrow is a retired Marine veteran. After retiring from serving our country, he's continued his service by helping veterans just like himself as a volunteer driver for Disabled American Veterans Medical Transport Service. I love doing it. It gives me an opportunity to kind of pay it forward to other veterans. It's a service between 800 to 1,000 veterans depend on every year to get to and from their health care appointments at the VA. There's so many folks that just don't have uh, their own transportation, so they don't have the opportunity to take advantage of the medical care that they have and uh, without having to pay money for their own transportation to get to and from appointments. Right now, they're working with only 11 volunteers to get veterans to and from their appointments, and they need your help. The need is great because we need drivers bad. Please come and join DAV Transportation because what you get at the end, it, it's, it's amazing. You get a family. In exchange for serving those who served our country. It's fulfilling for me. It's just that, that I'm actually doing something and I'm paying it for the other veterans. You can pay it forward too. Reporting in Augusta, Taylor Martin on your side. So volunteers do need to have a valid driver's license, a good driving record, pass a physical exam, and be able to conduct simple vehicle checks. Also attend a defensive driver training course that is provided by the VA Augusta. Volunteer. Doing a good deed in the yeah. process. And you can get a discount on your car insurance if you take defensive driving. It's a win-win. <laughs> New at 6 o'clock, a court ruling in Alabama causing controversy for a lot of state lawmakers about the process of medically assisting in the creation of embryos. Democrats worried Republicans may be plotting to put restrictions on in vitro fertilization known as IVF. The conversation is centered around the language in the bill. And as Georgia lawmakers debate this, here's what both sides have to say. States with these kind of restrictions lead to loss of physicians because we don't want to practice this way. We believe that life begins at conception and it doesn't matter the location of that life or how it came to being, it is still a human life and we need to protect it. And even if a committee refuses to hear the bills before crossover day tomorrow, there are still possibilities Georgia lawmakers can vote on this. Just a friendly reminder, tomorrow is the last day for you to donate to the Books for Shay book drive. A mother and father are honoring their daughter's legacy. Shayla Foster was just 17 years old when she passed away. She lived by the phrase, small acts of kindness will change the world. And today we caught up with her parents and talked about her passion for reading. But she, she just had a passion for books. She'd get a new book and just disappear for a while and like read through it like an entire novel in a day, like without stopping. She was uh, a voracious reader. That was always, books were always on her Christmas list. And the goal is to donate 4,000 new or gently used books to the Hub by tomorrow, so you still have some time to help them reach that goal in honor of Shay. Well, the rain has officially reached us here in Augusta, and it's going to be here to stay for at least a couple of days. I'll have a final check on your forecast coming up. You can't see it. Experience matters. 
coming up on the CBS Evening News. Our CBS News investigation looks at how private equity investors have siphoned millions from community hospitals and patients are paying the price. That and more headlines tonight on the CBS Evening News. Your News 12 watch and win keyword of the day. Did you think we forgot? We didn't. It's alert. Insert that keyword on the News 12 26 app for a chance to win a $70 gas card and be entered to win the grand prize, a 70-inch TV. Once again, that keyword is alert, which we hope you are. So you got this keyword. Love to see it there. I uh, hope you are staying alert, too, because we're seeing some rainfall. It has officially reached the city of Augusta. Some heavy rainfall in spots but again this is a, a current look right now outside the station we're sitting at 74 that dew point at 60 but again it is a, a little bit of unsettling weather out there those wind speeds anywhere from 15 to about 20 miles per hour but again this is what we are tracking they still extended that severe thunderstorm warning but we'll keep an eye on this for the rest of the evening and we'll track it again for you at uh, the top of the hour, 7 o'clock over on 26 News. And we'll see you back here at 11. We hope you have a great night. At the CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices to make for you and your family.